So, thought I'd talk about a little bit about darkness, depression, anger, all those good things. Even though some people don't seem to get sadness and anger really closely tied together. I usually once you use anger to cover up sadness, and then you get sad because of the things you did while you're angry. Anyways. So yeah, I'm just coming out of a probably of a of a week. No, actually. What is today? Monday, right? It's Monday. I think it's Monday. The twenty seventh. Yes, it's Monday. Uh so um Yeah, Saturday the eighteenth. Right, am I reading this right? Yeah, Saturday the 18th. I started feeling a little bit sick. Of course, now I got this Omnicron crap to worry about. I don't want to talk about that, but... And I started drinking. I, mean, I don't like Christmas to begin with. I'm unvaccinated. Not that that fixes much if you are. Okay, you can go to a restaurant until 10 o'clock. Actually, I think today. Well, it depends. We'll see. Did they just change it? It might be changed today. But with everybody else going into lockdown. But that's not really what I want to talk about. Not the causes or whatever. The immediate stuff. <clears throat> so. How do I deal with the loneliness? You know, when I first came to Prague. It seemed like one hell of a town. It seemed like. You know, my type of sin, to sin town, you know, or whatever. I've never been to Las Vegas, but I don't think it was as, um, whatever, commercialized, raunchy, whatever, the gaudy as Las Vegas. But now they're trying to change all that. The New Year's 2019, 2020 might be the last one for a long time. Of course, I was sick. But, um, didn't get to enjoy it to like I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, there's been a lot of times here, you know, and I feel lonely. But when I came here, I, I was like, I don't want to make friends with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Or whatever, Vladis, Vladis, uh, you know, Vladislav, and uh, you know, whoever, <laughs> whatever all their names are, <laughs> Peter and uh, and uh, Vladimir. <laughs> so um, I was kind of reluctant about meeting people at first, and. I knew the, also the problems of making friends with everybody that's in the bar. It's like you can't escape the goddamn bar. You miss the bar for one day and your phone starts ringing. Where are you? We're in the bar. I'm like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> so, let's see. This video isn't kind of meandering at the start. There's been a lot of ups and downs with this coronavirus crap. Long lockdowns. Um... Everything closed, not knowing what to do. Um, I just had a period of darkness a couple months ago, probably six weeks ago, when I realized, "Fuck, man, I, I can't. I'm, they're gonna, I'm gonna shut, be shut out of the gym again, sixth or seventh time." And yeah, so. And, of course, I started drinking. <laughs> I should never drink when I'm in a bad mood. That's just never going to end well. Um, so, yeah. But, anyways, last Sat or Saturday a week ago, I started feeling like I was getting sick. I had a makeup lesson, so I did that. And during the course of the lesson, I just started getting the sniffles and everything. I was like, motherfucker, not am I going to be a alone during fucking Christmas in a city that's half fucking dead? I'm going to be fucking sick during it. Of course, you, the the place to get beer is much closer than the place to get medicine. So, pff, and beer is pretty much medicine. 
<laughs> I think so. Alcohol can be medicine. I think so. Or kill whatever the, the pesky bugs in you trying to get you. I'd be like, oh shit, wrong, wrong environment, wrong bloodstream. Um, the weak people live over there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Retreat! <laughs> it's enough alcohol in this bloodstream to kill anything. <laughs> it doesn't have a strong liver. <laughs> so you can tell I'm already feeling better because I'm laughing. So I drank for like three or four days. Felt like shit for three or four days. I'd say about Thursday. Oh, was it Christmas Eve was Friday. Christmas was Saturday. Boxing Day was yesterday. So by about Thursday, I'm evening or whatever. I'm just like, oh man, I'm not drinking anymore. I'm exhausted and I'm I'm, I'm sick and it's just like I just was laying in bed. Thankfully, the next day, a friend who knew I was sick made a surprising a surprise visit and gave me some medicine. I did have a self help to our self test and I tested negative. He brought me a second one. I never used it because I was like, if I do test positive for COVID, I don't know what the fuck I want to do. I don't know if I want to deal with that shit right now, dealing with the Czech government. So anyways, depression. So how have I dealt with it? So you have to imagine the first lockdown was really weird. Lots of time to think. And I think what I, I somehow I was looking because I have Samsung and I was looking at Samsung Fitness and I saw they had meditation. So I think I started with meditation. Um, and also there was a guy I had been listening to. You might have heard Wes Watson, ex-convict, but big motivational speaker guy. And somehow at the same time, I think because I was listening to him and giving him thumbs ups on, or likes on YouTube, I started getting stuff to stoicism. And then liking that, I started getting more stoicism than Aristotle and Socrates and that type of stuff. Then I finally was at the bookstore and I saw they had Jordan Peterson's 12 Steps for Life or whatever. And I started really thinking. So, all of this takes work. And it can, can become a full time job. I mean, which is where they say you have to regulate your day. <laughs> this is wisdom. Like, why didn't nobody explain this to me when I was younger? I feel like I came from a family that was just, just do it. Don't ask why, just do it. Why? <laughs> Just do it, I'm going to take my belt off. Or you're going to be grounded for the next school year. <laughs> just, uh, why? <laughs> That's it. You're grounded for the next, you know, till next year. <laughs> no computer, you know, my groundings are no computer, or no Nintendo, no computer, no phone, no friends, no going out, no leaving the yard. Just you, school, your schoolwork, in your room. No TV, nothing. That was so I learned to sit in my room and not do homework. <laughs> That's what I learned when that plan backfired. Sit in your room and do nothing except get angry and depressed. And plan, you know, vendettas and vengeance and, and minor delusions of greatness and all this stuff. So, um, but yeah, so you have to, you know, another thing, keeping everything orderly. You know, in the last few days, I just let my apartment go to shit. That's amazing. It was clean before. Well, not at its cleanest, not at the ultimate level that I like to keep it at. But, um, yeah. Another thing I try to do, if I can do it right, is I set a time period of, like, don't listen to the news until a certain time of day. You know, a lot of people, I mean, we're taught to do this. God knows I, 20-something year habit. Wake up, what's the first thing you do? The news. Piss yourself off. Like, motherfuckers, you could, these sons of God damn it, mother, what the fuck country do we, 
<laughs> Haven't been up 10 minutes and you're already ready to commit murder. Um, I mean, in how many households is it common? 6.30 in the morning with your cup of coffee, you know, getting out, you getting in the shower, getting out of the shower. What's on your TV? CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, these morning shows, all this shit. I found out if you want to maintain mental health, watch those in the afternoon or in the evening. Well, probably not in the evening either because then you can fuck your sleep up. Um, so sometime I, I set make it till 10. So on a normal day, I'm usually up and about by 6, 6.15. So a good three and a half, four hours. Um, I try to do, like, in the morning, inspirational quotes, but I'm running out of them because I hate it whenever they start quoting people that I know are bad, like modern-day people, like Martin Luther King Jr. Sorry, he's a religious leader, but a man who beat women and uh, slept with pimps and hoes. Whenever you claim to be a religious leader and you sin worse than the rest of us, sorry, you're not on my uh, inspirational people's list. I mean, everybody's probably got monsters in their closet, but, um, but anyways, yeah, so I, I like old Greek stuff, really, or the old samurai stuff, the old Japanese wisdom, that type of stuff, you know, so when they start modern day bullshit, I'm like, nah, all those people are drug addicted losers, <laughs> abusers, <laughs> <laughs> or something, child molesters, God only knows. But anyways, so in the morning, ideally, what I'd like to do, I'm very piss poor at doing it repeatedly, but when I do get it going, I start to notice I feel so much better. It's like I get up early, in a clean space, head to the shower, oh, I'll listen to classical music. I don't listen to metal in the morning. I found out listening to metal all the time can keep you in this constant stage of oh, I'm ready to jump you know and that's cool you're like at a hundred percent all the time but the problem is you can't be at a hundred percent all the time if you try to run something at a hundred percent all the time it's not very long before it gives up and you're running to 20 percent so that's whenever the aggression the anger or whatever goes away because you don't have the energy the intensity to maintain that and then behind it's the sadness um, so, but yeah, so I, I listen to classical music in the shower. It doesn't have anything special. I think Mozart or Beethoven or something is probably the best, or Bach, but I mean, I mean, Liszt, Wagner, it doesn't matter, whatever floats your boat. I'm just talking about, like, music that's like, da, 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 you know, I wouldn't, like, gangster rap or whatever, or hardcore, you know, dance music, I wouldn't, none of that stuff, not in the morning. Um... And then, yeah, usually I have to work at between 7.30 and 8. So maybe meditate before then. But try to get a meditation in, which is only 10 to 15 minutes. Eating right. Stay fed with good food. And by good food, I just mean not junk food. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, $10 vegan, you know, super duper grown, in the, you know, the Himalayas or something <laughs> Some vegan weird shit, just to show off you got more money than the rest of us. <laughs> food, no, I'm just talking about standard store-bought food that's normal. That you make yourself at home. You put the ingredients together and you make it yourself. would do a lot for you as far as making you feel better. Exercise. That's a huge one. And then I've since found out you don't have to go to the gym to exercise. The gym can become an excuse. You can exercise anywhere. I found that out. I had to make a way. <laughs> the obstacle became the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, what would be my list? Get up early. Uh, I like to have a shower first thing. In the shower, listen to music. Between the bed and the shower, don't check your phone. Because whatever your thing is, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, pornography, the news, that's what you'll direct, and you'll already have fucked everything up. And then, um, 
yeah, so make it to the shower. I like make it to the shower, put on my music, you know, get in a good mood, come out, put on like my samurai stuff or whatever, start making my breakfast. Um, then start working. Then later have my, you know, snack, maybe find some time to meditate, a workout, journaling, that's a big one. Gratitude. I did a thing where I was, did one meditation. They said every time you see an airplane in the sky, find something to be thankful about. Well, the last two years, there hasn't been many airplanes in the sky, so it was kind of easy. But on some days in the summer, it's like, oh, shit. Okay, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this because <laughs> here would be like eight airplanes in the sky. Um, might not be the best thing if you live like in New York next to major, New York three major international airports. Jeez, you'd be swell. I mean... You'd be always be doing gratitude. I guess that's better than complaining. Huh. What else? Yeah. Of course, these are all things how you fix yourself. How do you fix other people? I do not know. And how do you keep it? You know, how do you stop attracting toxic, what they call toxic people? Of course, I'm probably a toxic person. <laughs> ah! Hey. So those are the things I found out. And if you do them, seriously, you can, uh, you will start feeling somewhat better. And mega, uh, uh, meditating, uh, uh, I was about to say Megadeth, I'm not even one of my favorite bands, I know how to play the verse. Um... Gratitude, a lot of these things, they're like exercise, I've come to find. An exercise or playing an instrument, the longer you do it, the more you get out of it. Don't expect us to start day one, you woohoo, I'm happy. <laughs> but it will happen faster than you think. So yeah, in the last little bit, someone said they were, well, I think I knew who said it, uh, so we're happy to see that I'm still playing guitar. Yeah, I hadn't played in a while, and then I came into two guitars. This is the much nicer one. I still don't have an amp. I'm looking at right now that one. Could go probably get one tonight if I wanted to go spend the money. I'm having problems keeping this motherfucker in tune. Or whatever, the idiots at the factory didn't put these strings in, right? I need to restring it with new strings, I think, to keep the strings from popping up. But anyways, interesting story. Impulse buy, probably shouldn't have bought it. Uh, they give you the exact numbers and check. That's like, uh, they've got, I got it. I'm the second owner. First guy in Harley ever used it, so it's pretty much brand new. I got all the papers, the boxes, everything. Um, I could see he had it shipped to his door for 18900 900 crowns or something like that. 950 crowns. Almost 19,000 crowns. Turned around and sold it to me for 12,000 crowns. Oh. Uh, something. I want to say that's like a $900 guitar for like $575, $580. I got it for $580. Something like that. And euros, it's like 830 euro guitar for... 520. Oh, and another let's say weird thing. I didn't play when in my when I was in my dark, sick drinking depression thing. I didn't play guitar for a week. I just got it all back in tune just a few hours ago. And I and my hands feel weird. Not after not playing after a week. I haven't studied check for a week. I haven't exercised for a week. I haven't cleaned. I didn't even take the trash out. That's one of that's what's on my to-do list. There's trash bags right here. <laughs> I'm about to go out and take the trash out. But uh yeah, it's so easy to get in this dark hole. And that's the thing I've like uh, I guess you know this intuitively, but you, sometimes there's intuitive knowledge you don't really think about until someone else points it out and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Um is that depression, anxiety, um, the, the, the phobias, they are all about, they shut you down. They're like positive feedback loop, loops. 
So your depression makes you want to stay in bed, and then your be staying in bed makes you more depressed, which makes you want to... <laughs> Or being anxious or nervous about doing something makes it only get worse and you're less likely to do it. And so when sometimes you realize it's like, I got to stand up and start fixing problems. And then in time you start fix, you know, it's almost like you start feeling a little better. But it is so hard sometimes when you get knocked off your pedestal, especially I think if you have this train response, which can develop from when you're a child. I actually think mine comes from that time period. Like, if you've had people constantly crush you and beat you down, it's really easy to get in this defeatist mindset. And then, like, if you read Peterson and stuff, there's chemical, you know, there's there's physiological and biological reasons for this stuff. Um, which is even more interesting. Which is why if you're really depressed... If you've got everything, you know, there's no reason why you should be suicidally depressed. That's why he recommends uh, antidepressants. Because he could just have an out-of-whack brain. But then he argues that there's another form of depression, which I always think is true, or that there's people who have a legitimate reason to be upset. And I think I fall in that category. <laughs> He'd have to be a little bit crazy not to be. <laughs> you know, uh, and through that, he, I guess, advocates, you know, fixing who you are through lifestyle changes. I mean, if you are thinking about killing yourself or if you're making plans to kill yourself, by all means, run, get help. But if, I, if me, I don't get to that stage anymore where I'm actively making plans. My worst, I guess, is I get to the point where I'm like, uh, you know, I just wish I wasn't alive. That type of stuff. Anyway, yeah. Moving by yourself to another country where you don't speak the language. In a time where when in a pandemic hits and then you, you're lockdowns and you're dealing with bills and you're nothing's for certain and you know, you don't know if you're going to be a criminal next year because of the vaccinations. Or, it, it can make you a little hoo-hoo. So I think you have to have a strong regimen. You know, what's funny. I didn't think I'd come here and come up, you know, become some sort of whatever. That's the way some people use the word sage. Philosopher or something. I thought I'd come here and have a girlfriend or maybe multiple one-night stands and a job and go out to the bars and live the normal life that everybody else get, got to enjoy. <laughs> that, that I never got to enjoy. <laughs> Always seemed to be de taken from me. And I got here and I was like, might have some time. Might be some time here before I'm old and gray to still have a little bit of fun. Nope. We're going to shut it all down. <laughs> it's time for you to sit inside by yourself. In deep introflection. Ah, that's it. Good evening from Prague on what is it? The 27th of December, 2021.